Hi, Susie. How are you? Hi. Are you yeah, I'm good. Just out here. I'm a bitch. Yeah, do it like this. Yeah, blow a little kiss. Yeah. I'm a fucker. I'm a bitch. Yeah, put in my hair while I'm talking that shit. Yeah. How are you holding up during all of this? Is this also like. Have you, was this the bulk of this album made during this pandemic? I was going to ask you that as well, but how are you holding up? No. no, so this album was made in November. In mm. So there were four days in October and four days in November, and it was done. So mm. we had like a whole rollout plan going into this year that got obliterated by everything. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think we handled it so well and like I think like the universe always gives you like gifts and like for example like the smells like sex video which ended up being like super intimate and like a weird like directed over zoom like performance art piece like I don't think that would have happened if like everything would have gone as planned so like it's you know it's hard to like roll with the punches sometimes but i feel like a lot of cool shit happened regardless so yeah, so, yeah. and that video is amazing i want to talk about Thank it but you. i want to talk oh, I yeah, want to rewind a little bit i want to rewind a little bit because so i remember when i was like just kind of not coming out i had been out for a little bit i was just getting like comfortable in my sexuality and stuff and that's when i heard bestie on a spotify playlist and I immediately was in love with it. So I've been like a fan for a few years. It's been a, what, f four or five years? Because I was 25. Yes. Yeah. Ah. So, so I wanted to talk about Bessie because I was reading about it. And I was reading you talking about it. And yeah. it's obviously a very, very queer song. Um, so I kind of wanted to talk to you about like the, the kind of discrepancy. Like, okay, because I read somewhere that uh, the label kind of wanted to present it as like bi curious. Um, and it's not like, it's a, like some like flavors of I Kissed a Girl, but maybe like times 10, you know? Yeah. So I kind of want to talk about that, I guess. And that song yeah. is amazing and like where it came from. And yeah, I'm asking a lot of questions at once because I'm excited. So. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Bestie, I wrote, I had no idea that that was going to be like the jumpstart to my career. I actually think it's so funny that it was. Like, <laughs> I wrote that song with uh, Scott Hoffman from the Scissor Sisters. And oh, yeah. yeah, I was working on my first album. I had had like this whole night with my actual bestie, so it's like based on experience. And I chose that song as my first single from the album, or it wasn't the first single, but it was like the the first one that like popped, I guess. And the label, uh, they're not a label anymore, so that just shows how good they are at decision making, but um, <laughs> they gave me a lot of pushback for that. and wanted me to be this sort of like heteronormative Katy Perry mm -hmm. uh, 2.0 pop star, which like she's straight. So that makes sense for her. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I was really disappointed with, with the way that that was handled with them. And, um, uh, but I, I kind of, you know, corrected it in interviews which looking back I'm like damn I was like a little 22 year old girl like out here like no like I am sexually fluid like I am queer but um I think that was that was like my first experience with like the sort of like corporate framework that artists are like expected to just exist within mm -hmm. um so so yeah that's that's kind of bestie <laughs> Yeah. Um, which, uh, same director, by the way, Bestie and Smells Like Sex videos. Oh, oh, we got yeah. the same Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I think it's like, it's just funny to me that that happened because that song is so like, to me, like unabashedly queer. Like it's like all that kind of oh, like yeah. hidden desire that you're like, okay, should I do this? Like maybe I should. <laughs> like, you know, I, I, see, I, I don't know. So there's, it's so funny to me. It's not even like, I'm not even like, how dare they? It's just like, this is just so queer. It's such a queer, like, intro. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I was kind of unaware of my own queerness, or not unaware, because I was fully, like, in a relationship with a girl, yeah. but um, <laughs> maybe uh, closeted is the word. I was mm-hmm. definitely, like, trepidatious about coming out, like, publicly in the media. I had never done that before, and and I thought, I mean, this is, like, 2015, like, there's a, there's a ton of, like, openly queer, successful pop artist right now but at the time it was like if you're a gay artist you're underground you know like there there weren't really a lot of like just fully out artists in the mainstream so I was definitely like uh fearful about that but um that fear isn't real and obviously I've I'm proud of myself for sort of like slowly coming into my own skin and like owning my sexuality and just I feel like it's just a journey. Like, I don't even know. I feel like right now I'm in another sort of like in between spot with my sexuality because I am just coming out of a relationship with a man. So, you know, that was unexpected. And I'm just like, whoa, I thought I was gay, but I, I was in love with this guy for the past year. So, you know, I think it's just like, I'm just kind of letting myself evolve and like going on that ride, you know? And that's how it should be, I think. Yeah. Just like, allowing yourself to totally be open agree. to any kind of love. That's why I love, like, the queer community is because we uh, experience that, like, not confusion, but just, like, that that constant, like, evolution every single day. And um, you're not going to find that with record labels. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so... so yeah. I didn't want to talk about that because it's like, it's interesting. And I, okay, because let's frame it this way. I just talked to the Aces, who are <laughs> really fun, like pop, pop, rockish group. And they're so good. I love them. And they talked about a similar kind of journey for them that, like, their first record, they like didn't have any pronouns. And there was this worry about, like, can we be successful if we're like talking about girls, you know? And it's yeah. still, so it still feels like a risk to this day. And it's yeah. not just like, it's, and it, I mean, it is a risk. I mean, the world is, but it's, it's changing, you know, we're following yeah. our group, we're finding our groups, we're finding our people. And I think yeah. that's like the power, like connecting with people, no matter who you are. And it's still like a, a process, a risk, but it's like, I think we're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're getting there. I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, it's refreshing to see, um, like my fans are very reactive to my authenticity, which is something that I like am constantly striving for in my music and in my work. So um, I, I feel like we're getting there because authenticity is becoming something that is, you know, just going to be more and more important. I yeah. think, especially with like, you know, the accessibility that we have to artists now, like on social media and like, I just feel like, you know, when you see someone being themselves and owning themselves, you're like, wow, like, I want to, I want to, I want to listen to her. Like, I want to be part of that and learn from that. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. That's exciting. That's the exciting part. Yeah. Um, I also, I love Mulholland before we talk about this. Thank you. I love Mulholland. I don't remember if that, it might be on EP. But yeah, that was really out, and I would that was right when I moved to LA and I would literally drive down Mahalan because I was in like, Studio City. Oh. Be like, oh. I love that. <laughs> the drama. <laughs> but oh I yeah. I'm like, damn, you know your Sizzy Rocket shit. <laughs> I do. I'm so excited about this album. Um, yes. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about it. The first two singles, I also just watched your live performance of roller skating. So I guess I could just, oh, yeah. just want to talk about the inception. You talked about how it came together in uh, October, November, and yeah. over a very quick succession. Why did it come out so quickly? Did you feel like you had something to say, or you knew what you wanted to say? Or Yeah, I was going through a breakup um, with a girl, actually, last year, and um, I feel like my album, Girl, was sort of like the falling in love of that relationship, and then 
uh, you know, the breakup happened. I won't like get into the juicy details, even though that's probably what everybody wants. Um, but I was just like super heartbroken and had just gotten back from tour and was sort of like, what is next for me? And that question like got me down and um, I went home to Vegas for like a week and was just sort of thinking about it. And my dad was like, well, what do you want to do? Like, you can do whatever you want to do. Like, there's nothing that should be next. Like, what do you want? And I was like, well, I've always dreamed of like, you know, just like getting a space that I can live in, that I can like make music in from like nine in the morning until like five in the morning and just like go and like, just let it come out and he was like okay do that <laughs> so I was like fuck okay um so I got on Airbnb and I booked a loft downtown and I called my producer Benny and I was like do you want to he lives in New York and I was like do you want to come to LA and like make a thing like I don't want to call it an album but like let's just like get the space and like make stuff in it um and yeah it was just like pfft just came out um I had that bitch and queen of the world before um but they were like in in demo form like literally me like singing into my laptop like this <laughs> um so they weren't like done by any means but um yeah the first situation was very successful so we had probably, there's 10 songs. We had like five or six of the songs. So um, the following month, I went on another tour and then I came back and then we, I did the same thing in Laurel Canyon and we just finished it up. So yeah, eight days. It just no, burst no. out. Burped out. <laughs> I said burst. <laughs> oh, they said burped out. I was like, oh, that's, that's an image. <laughs> burst. But I guess, I guess it could be perfect. That's amazing. I love that. Oh my God. Yeah. It was um, like one big burst. And I remember feeling like, just like energized. Like I barely slept. I probably slept like four hours a night, but I like didn't want to. It was the best feeling. My favorite song is Running With Scissors. I guess I will ask... I love the, I love the drama of like the the hard like pre chorus and then it goes into the chorus and you flip into the I can't yeah. remember the lyrics. It's like it's so pretty and so dramatic. Thank and, you. Um, that was actually the first song that we did. Like I got there, we unpacked, and then it was just like boom, like running with scissors, done. Um, which is just a crazy fact, I think. Yeah. Tell me, can you tell me about that? I'll just ask you what that specific song is about and the inspiration behind that one. Because I, I love it. Um, well, like I said, I was going through a breakup, like a, a pretty painful breakup. It was like one of those like nine month long breakups that can only end in like you guys blocking each other. <laughs> yeah. Which we're, we've like fully made up, like, I'm on great terms with this person now, but it was just like, yeah, I just had like a lot of fuel for that song. And I love the image of like running with scissors in the dark. Cause like, yeah. if you trip, like something bad's going to happen, you know? Um, but yeah, I feel like falling in love is like a huge risk. And I just wanted to like really uh, capture that feeling. Mm. I felt it. I felt it. Can you tell <laughs> me about the title, Anarchy, and yes. how that kind of like manifests in this record, I guess? Yeah, so um, I titled the record in January, which it's interesting to me that culturally we are experiencing sort of this like anarchy, I guess, um, which is amazing i think radical change is something that needs to occur but uh the title has nothing to do with any of that um i sat down in january with um my photographer and i actually have the, the book right here this is like our scheming book that's what i call it and we sat down and just started sort of like writing um 
and I wanted to call it uh, Pure Chaos. Ooh. Um, so we started with that. I was like, oh, Pure Chaos. Sorry, there's like a gardener outside. <laughs> Can you hear that? A little, a bit. little bit. But it's not too bad when you're talking. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm like, really? Right now? Yeah, um, so I wanted to call it chaos. So we started with like chaos, the queen of chaos, mm-hmm. pure chaos. And I was like, that's not like right though, because like, like yes, that the record is, is emotionally chaotic, but I'm like aware of it, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. So it's not just like lost in the chaos. And then we were listening to a punk radio station and Anarchy in the UK came on, Sex Pistols. And I was like, Anarchy? Like, I feel like punk is just like, I'm super influenced by punk, obviously. Like, I feel like there's like a thread of punk through my work since the beginning. Like, I put out a single called Sin Vicious last year. So I was just like, oh my God, Anarchy. Like, this is my personal, like, abandoning life as I know it and just like gunning for new experiences and like trying to find myself um so that's how we got to anarchy (laughs) and I think it's yeah I think it's also interesting because it's like to me I also think about anarchy in terms of like genre because it's hard Mm -hmm. to like pin down the genre it's like like you said there's like a lot of punk elements there's rock elements there's like hip hop elements. There's like yeah. like grunge elements. There's yes. it's so many like interesting overlapping, and then it's like kind of yeah. like dialed like minimalistic, which is very right now. Yeah, it's all I, I don't know. That. It's really cool. Thank you. No, I actually wrote down um, uh, the definition of anarchy in the book. Also, it's a a state of disorder due to non recognition of authority is what it mm. means so mm. it, so you know like this album was very much like a statement of like nobody can really tell you what to do or who to be or define you like I guess that's relevant to sexuality too it's like you can make yourself into whoever you want to be be whoever you want to be um and nobody can tell you what the fuck to do so that's like the the theme of the record and that's how we got anarchy yeah. And I almost changed it. I almost changed it because I was like, I don't want to, to, I don't want it to feel like a response to what's going on politically. Oh. Mm. You know, but I was like, no, like this anarchy is the punk statement. So fuck it. We're going all the way. <laughs> yeah. And it feels yeah. right. I, I feel, yeah. I felt, yeah. Yay. Good. Cool. I think it's also, I'm just like ranting now, but I think it's interesting because it's like, I think it's something specific for like LGBTQ people and um, that Mm -hmm. we do a lot of like self-reflection because we have to, you know, we do a lot Mm -hmm. of like analyzing and internal like second guessing and like, can I, what should I do? But I think it like, there's like, some of it is like (laughs) agonizing. Uh, but I think yeah. once you come out the other side, it's um we have a very strong sense of self that yeah. I don't know if like just heterosexual people have because they never had to really like hyper analyze. <laughs> oh my god, that's so interesting. It's just like yeah. my running theory. Um, yeah, and I think that like your title speaks to that. That kind of like I'm just gonna be and do whatever the fuck I want, and I worked hard to get to that point, and I don't know. I, yeah. I think it's really cool and I yeah owning it and owning it, all parts of it and the sexuality and all of it yes it's cool yes that <laughs> is it that is it yes <laughs> um let's see let me go back to my questions I'm yeah just, like, talk. okay Can you talk about like songwriting for other people and yeah, uh, what that was like? And like your favorite song that you wrote for someone else? Okay. Um, yeah, I started out as a songwriter. Um, actually, that's not true. I was Susie Rocket for a few years before I started writing for other people, but I got my publishing deal 
pretty early in my career, I didn't even know what it was. I didn't even know that a lot of artists didn't write their own material. So um, that was sort of a learning curve for me and learning how to like tell other people's stories was a learning curve um, for me and such a valuable lesson. Uh, just, you know, I've, I, I spent eight years doing sessions for other artists and um, I feel like I just learned so much and like learned the craft of songwriting. Um, but in 2019, right before I made Girl, I was just sort of like, I have been like burying my voice this whole time and I need to just like focus on like the world of Sizzy Rocket. Cause I feel like writing songs for other artists is, is a special experience, but being the artist and, and uh, telling your story is just completely different. You know, there's like the visual component, there's like the aesthetics, there's photos that need to be crafted there's you know interviews there's like a voice there's so so many other parts to it that I felt like I was missing out on um but I love writing songs with other people and for other people I want to say that my favorite song I've written for somebody else is ODD by Hey Violet um yeah it's kind of a deep cut but it's just about being like that weird girl like in the back of the classroom like scribbling in her notebook like and I just feel like that is so me <laughs> you know I just like relate to that so much and I feel like ODD wasn't my concept but um that collaboration was was really fun and telling that story was really fun there's some good lyrics in there so i've never heard that song but now i'm gonna go listen to it yeah <laughs> it's cool it's it's the good one do you was it weird because obviously you, you felt like you had something to say and that you wanted to say it a certain way like your own way yeah. is that like more or less scary than writing for someone else in terms of like putting your art into the world, you know? Cause I always get nervous when I'm putting something I, that I really care about. Yeah, I feel like it's way more scary. <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause um, yeah, I don't, when you're writing a song for somebody else, like you don't have to be the face of it. You don't have yeah. to post about it. Like you could, you could just anonymously have that day with that person and then no one will ever know. Yeah, it's but like, it's thank like, you. If, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, if this album, flops like my face is all over it you know <laughs> that was me um uh, I'm not I don't, I don't think it's going to but you know it feels more vulnerable to be like the face of something um and I just want to add that uh the reason that I also wanted to like focus on my own artistry is because I I saw the the way that the way things were being presented and the way albums were are are presented in the music industry is you know i wanted to do something more exciting i wanted to have like the art world be a component you know like i want to spray paint roses and film it and like make album trailers and like participate in like the whole thing you know yeah. so yeah i love that we love yeah. that so what's, yeah. what's next? What do you have cooking up? That It sounds like you have something planned. It's coming. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there is, there's an album trailer. There is another music video that we just finished. Yeah. Uh, it's something else. <laughs> like, I feel like all of my videos so far have been like a little like, ooh, like risque. Um, but this one definitely pushes that to the limit in the most like non in your face way um and that's all i'm gonna say like bestie was super in your face and like cheeky smells like sex is just like straight up just gives it all to you but this one is like way more subdued but also way more uh uh titillating so i'm excited about it okay. and same director 
So okay. shout out Dorian Talker for that. Shout out. Yes, I'm I'm trying to I'm picking up the breadcrumbs you're dropping, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sexy candy.